Hey there, everybody. P.T. Pop here with all four lows of my brain securely bound behind my back. And today I want to talk about how you should approach working in a call center right now if you're in a position where maybe you've lost your job because of the economy or because of COVID, how you should mentally prepare for working in a call center. Stay tuned. Before I get to tonight's main topic, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who subscribed to my channel. I'm approaching like, I think 5,000 subscribers. I'm about 300 people off from 5,000. So if you want to tell all of your call center friends or anybody, any of you who you, who you think will like my channel, just let them know. Give my videos the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification button. Um, I just completed a movie, my first feature film. It's a documentary called The Artist of Documentary. It's about the life and the struggles of our fine artists. And if you know fine artists and you know how hard it is to make a living, um, please check that movie out. I am um, currently working on a new documentary about being raised by two. Myself, it's an autobiographical doc documentary about how I was how I was raised by two alcoholic parents. And the chaos and the abuse that I suffered, emotional, mental abuse, in those circumstances. But it's a very serious topic. I don't know when the movie's going to be done. I just, I've been filming it, writing it, kind of writing it as I go along. And um, I'm hoping to have it done in the next couple of months. I, it's not, I don't think it's going to be any longer than an hour, the total production. But I'm looking forward to it. I, th I think you're going to find out a lot about me. But for those of you out there who grew up in an atmosphere like I did, where, where one or both of your parents were alcoholics, and there was a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of crying, poverty, um, I urge you to watch this film because it, the, the number one message, one of the messages, but the basic message in this film is you're not alone. And if you can overcome that, you can overcome anything. Because I overcame it. I still struggle with it. I'm 56 years old and I still have ghosts and demons from my childhood that haunt me um, pretty much on a daily basis. But I wrestle with them. I know lots of alcoholics and everyone just thinks they're having fun. They're just having a good time. I'm just having a beer, man. And I'm having another beer and another beer and another beer and another beer and another beer. And another beer. I'm, I'm, I'm fine, you know. I'm okay. Um, check out my books. I've got a variety of books for sale on Amazon under the name of Peter Tompkins. I... Uh, was thinking about how the economy is changing. There's inflation here in the United States. Companies are struggling. People are quitting their jobs. Restaurants are closing. One of the more, my wife's and my favorite restaurants is gone out of business or, or they, they closed for a while, then they opened and they restricted their hours. I don't even know if they're still in business. And I thought there's gotta be a lot of people out there that are being enticed on indeed.com and a monster to go work in call centers. And uh, I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of warning and how to approach these enticing jobs. They look enticing. They make them look enticing. If, if you're one of those people, let's say you're one of those people that used to, used to work in a restaurant, the restaurant closed and you're out of business and you're out of work. And you need work and you're you're thinking of going to work at a you know abc call center or xyz call center you need to approach this interview and this potential career move with caution and this is why I, this is why i say that it's because these companies will hire anything that has a heartbeat or has a pulse and they try to make it sound real sexy. They try to make it sound really cool. Like, oh, this is the best job. It's going to be so easy. You're going to have so much fun. You're going to meet so many nice people. It's not that hard. Is, there's not that much to learn. You'll have two weeks of training. You'll be on the phone. And you'll just be going like that. And they, they make it sound really enticing and sexy. This is how you approach a job like that. Go into it with skepticism, number one, and, and caution. Don't believe what they say. If you have to take the job because you, you need the benefits or you have kids or you need to you know, keep the roof over your head, 
go into the job with the expectation that you're just going to be there for a little while and keep looking for another job. The first thing I do is go into it cautiously, have a, a, a good healthy amount of skepticism, and make sure you keep your eyes open for another job to come along. Because this is a fact. There's a 90, like a 95% chance that you're not going to succeed in a call center job. Now, as I said in other videos, there are people, there are the select few who do make it <clears throat> in the call center world. And they do very well. But it's few and far between. And a lot of them who do make it know someone on the inside. They know someone in the HR department or they know somebody in the training department. They know one of the managers. They went to high school with him or college. Or they, you know, they shot up harem with him on the corner of East 9th and Euclid in Cleveland. I don't know. But they, they, if they know somebody, they got an in and they're never going to get in trouble. No one's going to write them up. And they're going to be able to come and do what they want. They'll be on the phones for a few months and they'll, they'll get um, promoted to another position off the phones, whether it's doing Q&A, quality analysis of the phone calls, or whatever, whatever they call it these days. Go into it knowing, go into it optimistically as you can, but be realistic. You've got to be realistic when you go into this that you're probably not going to be there very long because most people do not last more than six months in a call center job. It's guaranteed. <clears throat> the turnover rate in these call centers from my calculations and some of the bigger ones, like when I worked at Verizon and Wells Fargo, the turnover is like 50 to 60% in the first year. So if, let's say you have a training class with 30 people in it and you're all training for the same position, like a call center customer service rep, there's 30 people. After six months, 15 people will, will be left. 15 people will have either resigned or been fired. <clears throat> this is why I mention this because the attrition rate is through the roof in these call centers. And most of these call center jobs will tantalize you with benefits, 401k, bonus plans. They'll make it sound really sexy. And I would take it. I would take it as long as you can. But you, you've got to keep in mind, they're, they're going to make it sound sexy. They're going to make it sound fun. They're going to say, this is so much fun. It's a rock and roll atmosphere. You're going to come in here. You're going to make friends. You're going to love our customers. You have the best customers in the world. Oh, it's great. And you're going to get in there and find out it, it was all a lie. It was all a smoke screen just, just to tantalize you, to get you to come in. I would use the job as a tool to, to keep yourself afloat. Picture it as if you were on the Titanic and the boat sank and you're clinging to a piece of driftwood in the middle of the ocean or you're on a lifeboat. <clears throat> the call center is a lifeboat. The call center is a piece of driftwood. It is not your future. Some people do survive in call centers and they do make a career out of it. If you happen to have a high tolerance for insanity and chaos and nasty people and you don't mind being called every name in the book and you have a photographic memory and you learn quickly and you know you do, like, you know, literally someone says you need to do this, this and this to put a car engine together and you remember this, this and this. You don't know anything about car engines, but you just happen to remember that's how a car engine goes together. You're, you may, you may have a great career at it. And if you work well under pressure, there's, there's tons of pressure. You're going to feel overwhelmed if you've never done this kind of job before. If you don't handle pressure well, if you don't handle pressure well, if you don't handle crazy people, uh, strangers screaming at you over the phone, insulting your race, insulting your sex, your religion, your voice. Um, if you don't handle that stuff well, you will not last more than a week or two. You will not. It will it will kill you. This job will eat away at you. If you don't handle criticism well from superiors, um, as I said in a previous video, I worked in the telecommunications industry. And, you know, I never had a bad review. I never got written up. I never got disciplined. I was never I was never in the boss's office, you know, with them saying, hey, what the hell's wrong with you? Like I was when I got in the call centers. I never I never got in trouble in telecommunications. And um, it was really a shock to my ego when every boss I had in the big corporate call centers was sitting down with me saying, hey, Pete, what's going on with you? You know, you're. Your call volume's not good enough. Your talk time's too high. <clears throat> You've got too much nerd time or too much time between calls. You're in the bathroom too much. It really beat me up badly. So what I'm saying to those of you who might be contemplating going into call center work is 
to listen to me. You don't know me. I'm no one at all, but I've worked in enough call centers in two or three different states, two states, to know you're about to walk right into a meat grinder. You're walking right into withering gunfire, and most people don't survive it. And I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not making, I'm not um, over exaggerating. This is exactly how it is. And look through all my videos. Look at the comments from thousands of people from around the world that I've talked to and I've, quote, met. I've talked to people from all over the world that agree with what I say. And I say this with a serious tone because it's a serious matter because you're desperate. You need a job and, and you've got to make money. You've got to pay the rent. Um, I would go into this with a healthy attitude. Don't go in there thinking you're going to fail, but go into it thinking this is just a part-time thing. I'm going to get out of here soon. And try to keep your goals, not on that job, but your goals down the road for another career, someplace else, something that you know in your heart you wanted to do. They are going to make it sound like heaven, and it is hell. When you're interviewing in these call centers, you're being interviewed by the devil himself because they are desperate to have bodies on the phones. So that's my message tonight. If you're thinking of going to a call center, I would avoid it if you can. But if you have to, go into it with a healthy amount of um, skepticism. Watch out for yourself. Keep your eyes down the road looking for something else. Because the call center for most people is not a launching pad to get into that company. They're going to tell you a lot of things. You're going to see a lot of people coming into this call center and they work on the phones for six months. The next thing you know, they're working in our accounting department. Or they're working in marketing. Or they're working, they're, they're out trimming the bushes or something. They make it sound like it's not, it's, it's not as bad as it is. They do that because they're so desperate to get people to come in. Because the, the turnover rate in these call centers is through the roof. So hang in there. It's kind of a bummer message, but look for something better. You know, I, I would try to go work in a warehouse, someplace where you don't have to deal with the general public. Hey there, buddy. What you doing? You coming in? Come to say hi to the people. My dog Eli is here. Hi there, buddy. What you doing? You coming in here to sit with me? It is like midnight here. And I usually uh, go to bed with him around this time, so he's wondering what the hell I'm doing. <clears throat> and he's going to sit right next to my light. So that's all I had to say. So I hope you're all having a good week. If you're here in America, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. You have lots of turkey and cranberry sauce. And you enjoy what time you have with your family, if you have a family. I'll keep you all in my prayers because I know all of us can, can say we've shared a similar misery. And we all have that one thing in common of working in call centers and or the corporate world that they're both they're synonymous and they're both terrible I'm, I'm not a fan of the corporate world um but that's all another story take care check out my movie the artist of documentary at the artist of documentary.com and uh take care have a good day bye